Chapter 29 When they stopped for breath, Billy said, Why are we running? There's no place to go. They're going to blow this place up when we leave. Even if there weren't any aliens outside the defences, we can't get far enough away on foot to escape the blast. I don't plan for us to be on foot, he said. If what they said is true, nowhere on earth is any better, Beulah put in. The three of them were leaning against the inside of a stanchion, a support post that ran from the ground up through the level they were on. Wilkes guessed they were on the third level, probably 50 metres above the surface. I don't plan for us to be on earth either, Wilkes said. What are you talking about? That from Billy. Remember what the controller said when we left orbit? There are programmed troop carriers here. When they leave, we'll be on one. How? Wilkes hefted the general's pistol. By doing whatever it takes. Bueller looked uncomfortable. I'm not supposed to allow that, he said. Wilkes laughed. <laughs> How are you going to stop it, Gimpy? Besides, I see a basic flaw in your programming here. If they are going to kill us, me and Billy, and we are going to kill them, who do you worry about the most? Bueller chewed on that for a second. Billy, he said. Ah, so some folks are more important than others, eh? Yes. They didn't teach you that in the vats. No. Wilkes laughed again. <laughs> you just stopped being an android, pal. Welcome to the human race. Billy allowed Wilkes to take Mitch. They could move faster that way, Wilkes said. And even as they ran, she marvelled over what Mitch had said. He had outgrown his programming. His body might not have been born of a woman, but as far as she was concerned, he was a man. Wilkes led them into a storage area that had a computer terminal. He began punching questions into the system. What are you doing? He didn't look up at Billy. Finding out which of the drone ships are carrying crew and which are only lugging cargo. Some will have troops. Some will be hauling supplies. We can find a supply ship, we can dump some of them and replace the weight with us. We don't even know where they're going, Billy said. Who cares? Can't be any worse than being fried by atomics or eaten by the monsters. Wilkes, I know what you're going to say, he said. I thought my job was over when I blasted the alien's homeworld. That I could come back, get stuck away in some nice quiet prison or brain wiped, and that would be it. I was looking forward to it. But now, no. I can't quit until every one of these alien bastards is dead. Is it worth it? It is to me. A man's got to have a reason to get up in the morning. I spent years trying to decide if I should just shut my own lights off. Something always kept me from doing it. I never knew what, exactly, but I'm glad I did. I might die, kid, but I'm going to go down swinging. He was as happy as she'd ever seen him. He had a purpose, and that was more than a lot of people had. Ah, here we go. A cargo drone, number 302, nicknamed the American. Bay 16, level 5. Here's the overlay map. They approached the docked ships cautiously. Wilkes put Beulah down carefully and drew the handgun. I'll just wound the guards, he said. I won't kill them. Thank you, Beulah said. Stay here. I'll be back when I'm done. He started to leave, paused. Hey Beulah, I never got around to telling you how good a job you and your troops did. You did okay. For an android? Beulah said. Nah, for anybody. Wilkes eased his way onto the dock, using the supports as cover. In the end, it was easy. There were four guards, they had their weapons slung, they weren't expecting trouble. When he was close enough, and still covered, Wilkes took a deep breath, brought the pistol up, and quickly fired four times. The suppressed barrel cut most of the noise. He hit each of the four guards once, right between the eyes. Headshots were the best way for an instant knockdown, so he lied to Beulah. Life was hard.
Billy saw Wilkes coming back. Our ride is here, people. Let's go. He led them past the bodies of the four soldiers who had been guarding the ship. Mitch looked at the dead men. Sorry, my hand must have slipped, Wilkes said. Mitch shrugged. Once they were dead, his responsibility ended. Wilkes had to know that. Behind them, small arms fire rattled. It didn't sound close, but it wasn't too far away either. Looks like company has come calling, Wilkes said. I bet the schedule is going to be advanced just a tad. The ship was a rectangular module with heat tiles on the bottom and a small control cab that looked vaguely like the head of a giant insect stuck on the front. It seemed almost an afterthought to Billy, the way the cab joined the brick-shaped body of the ship. Wilkes caught her look. Cobbled together out of spare parts, he said. We'll be lucky if it doesn't come apart when we lift. Come on. We've got to move some gear around. This bird is loaded with food supplies and frozen sperm and over. Regular little Noah's Ark. We have to install an oxy plant and recycling and recovery system so we can breathe and have a way to clear wastes. And since I don't know how long we'll be in flight, some sleep chambers would be nice too. Take us a couple of hours. I've located the stuff we need on the ship next door. What about the passengers on that ship? Mitch asked. They can double up in the chambers if they have to. This bird doesn't have any because it's meant to be crewless. We need them more than they do. It took almost two and a half hours to get the proper gear installed and would have been impossible without the dumb bots Wilkes rounded up. The sounds of combat were drawing much closer as they finished. He could hear the occasional ricochet ching off the alien armour and whoever had taken over from the dead general would probably be hauling ass real soon now. Every now and then, Wilkes heard a man or woman scream. Yeah, real soon now. Let's lock it up, he said to Billy. I have a feeling we'll be going for a ride any minute. The control cabin still had acceleration couches in place. They hadn't gotten around to stripping them, so Wilkes helped Billy cinch Bueller into place before he went to his own couch. He didn't know exactly where the retreat was going, but he had rigged the sleep chambers so they could climb in when they hit hyperspace. The automatics would shut the things down when they dropped back into normal space. After that, well, they'd see. No sooner had he fastened his own restraints than the ship's board lit up with launch readings. Close. Hang on, he said. Looks like somebody just lit the fuses. <laughs>